Personality. Hello, everyone. Welcome to JoJo's Personality TV. I'm your host, Josiah. And I'm your co-host, Jaquela. And our mission at JoJo's Personality TV is to provide opportunities for youth and their parents to explore careers and set achievable goals. And today we are here with Senator Mia McLeod, and we are going to be learning about women in politics. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on our show today. Nice to be here with you guys today. I'm yeah. sorry, you ladies today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what college did you go to? I went to the University of South Carolina, and after I graduated from USC, I um, went to work for about a year and a half, and then I went to law school at the University of South Carolina. So I'm a game cop twice. <laughs> was law school fun? Law school was interesting. I wouldn't call it fun. It was a lot of work, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of lectures, um, but it was very enlightening. What skills did you learn in college are important for your work like today? Um, well, in college, I majored in English because I love to write. And so the communication skills and the writing skills that I learned in college, I think, benefit me most today because I do a lot of writing and communicating with my constituents. What degrees did you have to earn? I earned a Bachelor's of Arts, <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, excuse me, Bachelor of Arts uh, degree in English and as an undergraduate, and then I earned a law degree, a Juris Doctor degree. So can you explain to us what it means like an undergraduate? Um, that's just the four years that I went to college and I majored in English. I tried to major in something that I really liked and I loved English. I loved writing in high school. Didn't like math so much. Um, I wasn't nearly as good at it so I kind of stuck with what I loved. I loved to read and I loved to write. So I majored in English and I think it has served me well. So how has being senator changed your life today? Oh wow, <laughs> being a senator has changed my life uh, a lot. I served in the South Carolina House of Representatives for six years before I ran for the Senate recently. Um, and that too changes your life a lot. If you are a public official and you want to be a true public servant to the people that you represent, it does change your life because you see the issues and the, the things that are happening with people and you want to help, you want to make things better in their lives. So sometimes you take the things that impact them to heart and it's it can be frustrating um, but it's also very rewarding when you know when I can help somebody who's truly in need and, and truly give them a voice in government because that's what it's all about. How has this journey been for you so far? So far, the journey has been great. I have tried to take it all in and, and just, you know, not take anything for granted. I'm grateful for every opportunity that I've had and for everybody who has supported me every step of the way. Um, sometimes it does get to be a little heavy, though, uh, and that's what I was talking about when I said, you know, people have some pretty heavy issues at times, and just knowing and seeing them go through that, you know, you, we can't really separate ourselves from it because we represent um, all of those people. So when things are going well, um, it's great. And when things aren't going so well, then you know, we've got a big job to do. So sometimes that gets a little heavy, but I wouldn't take anything from my journey. I've, I've enjoyed the journey so far. So what's been the most challenging thing so far? So far, I think dealing with, um, dealing with people who serve in the House or the Senate who aren't there for the right reasons. Um, dealing with the hypocrisy that I see sometimes um, from different colleagues who, you know, whose hearts aren't necessarily with the people that they represent, that's probably been the most frustrating thing for me. Have you ever thought, have you ever thought about being president? <laughs> no, I have not. I have not thought about being president. Actually, before I ran for the South Carolina House, I never thought about being a representative. And, of course, I had never even thought about being a senator. But I, um, I ran initially because I thought I could make a difference. And then once I 
was elected, I knew that I could make a difference, and so I continued to run. But I don't really think about it like, oh, you know, next I'd like to run for president. No. Um, I just take each day as it comes and try to do the best I can for the people that I, I serve and represent. So who or what inspired you to run? Well, um, our former, my predecessor, our former um, representative, I thought he did, his name was Anton Gunn, and I thought he did a wonderful job in terms of truly representing me. So when he was representing me, I didn't, you know, I, I believe that he was always looking out for my interest. And I thought, wow, that's what a true public servant should do. Um, and then he was appointed by President Obama to go and um, tackle a bigger job on a national level. And he talked to me about running and whether I had an interest, and at that time I didn't. <laughs> um, but I slowly um, developed an interest when I saw that it wasn't likely that we would have somebody in that position that would do things that he did. And I really admired and respected what he did. And I've tried to, you know, model my public service after that. After so, him. what is a quote or model that you would Oh, wow. Um, a quote or motto that I try to live by is like so many people, a lot of times I have fear about the things that I can do and the things that I can handle. Um, and I, um, I watch um, Joyce Meyer. Have you ever heard of Joyce Meyer? And one of her, um, one of her favorite taglines or, or mottos is "Do it afraid." And that is that has become mine. I whatever you know, whenever the doors of opportunity open, I try to you know I pray about it first. And if it's something that I believe God is leading me to do, then I do it, even if I have to do it afraid. And that that works. So, what are some issues that you're working on? Some of the issues that I'm working on are. Um, teen dating violence. We're trying to make sure that teens who may be in abusive relationships are protected. Just today, um, we had a group of students who came from the Scholars Academy at Ridgeview High School, and they testified before our Senate subcommittee about why we need that kind of law. I'm also, I also have a bill that would um, keep students safe within our schools. Um, I know that you are probably, you've probably seen the video where the student was thrown out of her chair by a school resource officer that happened at Spring Valley, not far from here. And um, so I've introduced a bill that will allow school resource officers to protect our students within our schools from people who are seeking to come onto school campuses to do them. Um, I've also introduced a bill that would require employers to pay women the same wages, the same salaries that they pay men for doing the same jobs. Um, so those are some of the issues that I'm passionate about. Of course, education. I'm from Bennettsville, South Carolina, so mm -hmm. when I go, when I go, <laughs> to my hometown, um, I, you know, I get to see that the schools in my hometown are in far worse condition, um, the physical part of the, the, of the schools, than the schools that my sons attend right here in Richland School District too. So we have to level the playing field and make sure that we have equal funding um, in our public schools so that all of our students can learn and have access to the same resources and opportunities. So those are some of the things that I'm working on. So since you've been senator, have anyone in Bennettsville come to you with a problem that you would say about the schools or something? Well, they don't necessarily come to me with problems about the schools, but I get calls from people in Bennettsville 
sometimes and they want to know um, you know if I'm working on issues like that because they know that if I work on an issue that is related to education then it's not just for students in Richland School District 1 or School District 2 it would be for students in Marlboro County Schools as well and so yeah I do get questions about that I get questions about um, health care and Medicaid expansion from people in Bennettsville because you know that our hospital closed and that's an issue that's really important for a lot of people. Um, I've been in the hospital in Marlboro Park Hospital many times when I was your age because I had pneumonia or I had another illness and you know if we didn't have that hospital there I don't know where I would have gone or whether I would have had time to get to another hospital. So. Those are concerns for a lot of the people in Marlboro County and in Bennettsville specifically, but they aren't unique to Bennettsville. So yeah, I do get, you know, people from Bennettsville and from Marlboro County, they know that I'm their senator too. I represent Richland County, but, you know, they appreciate the fact that I'm always looking out for the small, rural, um, underserved communities like my hometown because that's important and we can't move forward as a state if there are portions of the state that are still lagging behind, whether it's education or health care or economic opportunities and jobs. So we have to make sure that everybody is able to thrive and be successful wherever they are. So for a child that's looking for being in the field that you're in, what advice would you give them? Oh, I would, I would tell them to do exactly what you all are doing and that is to talk to those of us who are in these positions to come and shadow us. Um, you may not want to serve in the Senate. You may want to serve at another level. You may want to be governor or president someday. But, and you can do all of those things. Um, or you can serve, you don't even have to serve as an elected official to serve your community. So I would, I would encourage them to follow their hearts, follow their interests, wherever their passions are. If they're passionate about interviewing people, they might have, you know, a job in media. They might be the next um, person on a national, um, a national news station or a national show. Um, if they have an interest in politics, then they, of course, can shadow me or shadow another elected official and just kind of see what we deal with on a, on a daily basis and get a feel for where they really think they might um, be able to contribute the most and, and then go for it. Well, thank you so, 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 so much for allowing us to interview you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this interview. We loved it too. <laughs> to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Twitter. Bye, guys. Bye. Be who you want to be. It's your personality. Be who you want to be. It's your personality.